Welcome to the Holland Financial Report. It is Monday, August 1st. And of course, joining me is Robert Marr, our Vice President of Investments. Robert, the year's going so fast. Just yesterday, it seemed like July 31st. It just like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay. It's, it's so a lot to talk about. And of course, uh, stock market activity, interest rates, and the word, ready? Recession. The word of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is recession. Um, so there's a lot of talk. I'll do this. Robert's like, I don't know if I want to talk about this, David. I'll do it. Uh, my pleasure, Robert. Sure. We've got a lot of conversation about recession and are we in a recession or not? For the last 30 years that I have been paying attention to the financial world, the definition of a recession was two quarters of negative growth, meaning that the economy is shrinking. There, I said it, Robert. I don't know if I'm going to get canceled, but there, that was it. There you go. First quarter dropped 1.6%, second quarter, 0.9%. Okay. Two in a row. All right. So that is what it is. Now, is that the end of the world? Nope, not at all. Okay. So we're seeing some, you know, some uh, uptick with the market. Of course, last week we saw that. We'll see what this week brings. But um, there, you know, it's it's not all doom and gloom. I mean, you know, it's not like we're in a, uh, where the market is down some crazy amount. I mean, we'll go over the numbers real quick for everybody. But you know, I mean, there's there's some potential here for things to pick up. We just got to work through a, a rough spot. Exactly. Um, and I'll, I'll take that as my cue That's to go, cue, through, man. go yeah. over the numbers. Um, let's do the one year. Uh, NASDAQ is out of bear market territory. It's down 15.5% uh, for the one year. Um, and S&P 500 and Dow Jones, uh Fall fell negative six percent and almost just shy of negative six percent, uh, respectively. Um, and then if we look at year to date, uh, the Nasdaq is still in a bear market territory, but barely down negative twenty point eight percent. Anything over twenty percent, of course, is bear market territory. Um, S and P five hundred just over thirteen percent down, so in correction territory, more than ten percent. But uh, and Dow Jones year to date is down less than 10%. So, um, and you mentioned it, David, but last week, the numbers were great. Stock market did really well last week. And three out of four weeks in July were up. Um, J July numbers were very strong. And, you know, we usually say, you know, well, a lot of times, you know, stocks will do really well in anticipate or in response to bad news because of the expectation that the Fed will ease up. There we go. And, um, and last week, we had some pretty ugly numbers, but the economy is contracting. So, so that's kind of what you expect. Right. So, and, and you know, going back to the, the point which you've made and I made earlier is that, you know, we're, we, we obviously these are negative numbers. We're not, we're not happy about it, but, you know, I'll take you back in my time machine to 2000, 2001, 2002, we had three down years and cumulatively it was almost 50% down for the S&P 500 and the Dow. So um, yes, these are not pleasant things. These are not great numbers. There's negative. People's portfolios have been affected, but this is exactly why we talk often about keeping a diversified portfolio, not having all your money in the market, especially money that you're going to live on and draw on for income and anything in the market, you have to be willing to accept these ups and downs. You don't have to like it, okay? But you have to understand that this is part of the deal. Exactly. Um, and, you know, kind of a note of caution. Um, we, we've had two straight quarters of contracting GDP growth. Recession. Um, recession. Um, we are in a recession as per the definition that we've known for the past 25, 30 years, several decades. Um, but, you know, with the Fed hiking rates, we're at 2.5 percent right now. But the housing market continuing home sales, new home sales, um, really missing expectations. Uh, housing market is in pretty rough shape. And the danger, I don't want to use the word danger, but um, what's concerning is that with, um, for example, the consumer sentiment, um, the outlook for the next year is negative. So things most likely will get a little worse. But again, just like what we experienced not only last week, but last month, David, was uh, uh, um, positive growth. A lot of the stock indices were green. Um, so again, volatility. We expect things to go lower when unemployment's... And another thing, everybody with this recession think, oh, but the unemployment numbers, we have a really strong labor market. Unemployment is great. Um, well, yes and no. Uh, we, we're still not where we were pre-COVID in terms of the unemployment numbers and in terms of the um, labor participation rate. We're still not where we were 
uh, pre-COVID. And yet the economy is contracting, the Fed's hiking, um, we're in a recession, and yet we're not even back to where we were before the last recession. So, you know, the, the numbers may get a little worse, but with volatility, like you said, you still want to stay invested. If you have a plan, you have a strategy, you want to stick to it. Very good. You, um, you did some good uh, prep for the show today, Robert, in terms of looking historically at where the markets have been and also with regard to unemployment. Share the one that you have about where we you go a little further with the pre-COVID and how many more people we have versus, what was it, 20... 2000 or 2020, what was the numbers oh, you have? This okay. is an amazing statistic. Um, and, and we've mentioned this before, and, and it just blows my mind. So the U.S. workforce now, we have 158 million people in the workforce right now. 22 years ago, in 2000, we had 159 million people, meaning 22 years ago, we had 1 million more people on the payrolls than we do now. Now, I have to say a lot of them probably, you know, black market, you know, pay, being paid under the table. But, you know, let's look at the U.S. population now, 333 million versus 282 million. That's 51 million more people now, but 1 million fewer jobs. 51 million more people, but 1 million fewer jobs. Um, you know, people say, and, th and this really uh, grates me for some reason, is, is uh, you always hear, well, you know, there's almost two jobs for every one person. Okay, well, that, that is not good news to me. That, right. That's telling me something is very wrong structurally and, you know, beyond my pay grade. But that's not like, hey, that's a great thing. If those jobs aren't being filled, that's a problem. It is a problem. And, uh, you know, I, I like it. I was thinking of an analogy. And it's like, OK, well, all of a sudden we've got more people on the boat and, uh, you know, every one of them that's gotten into the boat is not rowing. <laughs> and in fact, somebody who was rowing gave up a, a, their oars. And, and why not? If all, so many other people aren't rowing, <laughs> hey, I'm going to take a little break. So, uh, you know, there is a headwind that we're dealing with here. Um, but I think that as we move forward, on a positive note that you spoke to a couple of times, Robert, um, you know, the market um, responds sometimes counterintuitively. And we see that with, um, you know, some negative news, some bad news, that that then causes the people that are looking to invest in the market go, OK, well, wait a minute. If the news is bad, then the Federal Reserve, which is raising the Fed uh, fund rate, Correct. right? Yes. And as that rate goes up, the rate also goes up for the prime rate, which is why it really affects us, you know, every day, us on Main Street America, right? So, um, and that causes the economy to slow because it makes borrowing more expensive. So this is how all that, you know, comes together. But as they, we see the negative news, then it's like, okay, well, the Federal Reserve then hopefully won't feel a need to raise the rates more. And then the investor outlook becomes much more positive. Correct, exactly. I couldn't even, I couldn't have said that better myself. Well, I rehearsed this in the mirror this morning for like an hour, so. I, you I, did a great job. <laughs> All right, well, that is what we endeavor to do here is to, uh, to do a great job for you, ladies and gentlemen, and to help you plan stronger.